Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Out of respect for Jesus, who we know is present here among us as we read his words. The Holy Gospel today is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter. Since the Gospel is for all people, let's all read it together. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not, but later changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, You did not change your minds and believe him. This is the good news, the gospel of Jesus. You may be seated. So Jesus is kind of on a tear. He doesn't mince words in today's reading. This reading comes right after we hear in Matthew's gospel that Jesus had rode into town to celebrate the Passover festival. You'll remember The crowds going wild, clamoring for Jesus, celebrating him like a rock star. Hosanna in the highest! And the chief priests, the elders, the church leaders, they didn't like it. Jesus' popularity and his teachings were rocking the foundations of their control. That's the context of today's reading. So picture it, rock star Jesus rides into town, throws the money changers out of the temple, goes straight in the temple and starts teaching. The chief priests and the elders, they kind of thought of it as their temple, turn to Jesus and say, by what authority, or to paraphrase, what gives you the right to shake up our system? And Jesus, in his answer about the baptism of repentance from John the Baptist, uh, baptism that the church leaders had refused, is saying to them, you think you know what God's about, but you've settled for a life of saying the right words and keeping up the appearance of being churchy instead of letting God have your whole heart so that God can break God's kingdom through to the world, through you. And then, Jesus says, even the prostitutes and the tax collectors have accepted this change of heart, this baptism of repentance from John, and they're getting into heaven before you because of it. They're getting closer to the kingdom of God because of it. It's as if Jesus is talking to the outsiders, the ones who didn't come into church because they would be shunned if they even stepped foot. The excluded and the outcast and the destitute. And he's saying, hey, all y'all who feel like you've been blocked from the good that should flow from God's church, you have a place 
with me. You are welcomed and loved and invited. I can see your hearts and they are ready for God's kingdom to break through. The chief priests and the elders probably would have felt that door slam. Maybe some of us do too. The chief priests and the elders wanted to just get back to what's familiar and recognizable in a landscape that was drastically shifting in front of them. Maybe sometimes that sounds familiar to us. That's what the chief priests and elders wanted. But Jesus wanted their hearts. So then Jesus tells a parable about two children of God who are asked to go out and do God's work. And the church leaders understand that the one who had the change of heart and went out and did the work is the better one. But Jesus confronts their blindness to how their own religiosity is like the non-working brother who said the right things but didn't have the change of heart, didn't go and do the work. Jesus is challenging that they're not open to God's kingdom breaking through their hearts with new life. This is one of those passages where Jesus comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. You see, God wants our hearts when it's about your heart, you can't just say yes, but stay right where you are. Repentance is a moving, a turning. God loves you just the way you are, but God loves you too much to let you stay there. And God needs you to be God's light and love to the world, perhaps even in ways that you've never imagined. So I wonder what kinds of things block us from the change of heart to respond more fully to God's call. Probably mostly fear. We set up our world to shield ourselves and make sense of what's happening. We all have our little bags of tricks to cope and survive this crazy life. God's call for kingdom work sounds like an amazing ride, but it sure is filled with unknowns. So maybe the fear of failure. What if we can't pull it off? Maybe the fear of success. What if it turns out better than our wildest dreams and we're left with nothing familiar or recognizable? The fear of inadequacy. What if we just aren't enough? I like how Preacher and author Rob Bell talks about this uh, using the example of Peter walking on the water to describe how fears and doubts block us from giving ourselves fully and wholeheartedly to God's work. When Peter starts sinking, Jesus says, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And Rob Bell explains, I always assume that Peter doubts Jesus, but Jesus isn't sinking. So who does Peter doubt? Peter doubts himself. He loses faith in himself that he can actually be like Jesus. But Jesus wouldn't have called Peter if Jesus didn't think Peter could be like him. Rob Bell continues, All my life I've heard people talk about believing in God. But don't forget that God believes in us, in you, and in me. I mean, faith in Jesus is important, but what about Jesus' faith in us? So, may you, sure, believe in God, but may you also come to see that God believes in you. May you have faith in Jesus, but may you come to see that Jesus has faith that you can be like him a person of love and compassion and truth, a person of forgiveness and grace and peace and hope and joy. Our call from God can be summed up in five simple words that we try to live out our church mission statement. Say it with me. 
love God, love others, serve. Just a little more context about today's scripture reading. It happened right after Jesus rode triumphantly into town for the Passover. Jesus knew where that holy week would lead to the torture of death on a cross. He knew that that Passover celebration would be like no other. Instead of shielding himself, Jesus faced his death with compassion. He gave us his complete gift of love, broken and poured out for us. In a few minutes, we'll gather at the table to again share that meal together. As we feast on this bread and this wine, this gift of Jesus' very self for us, our hearts are changed. We become more like Jesus. We will say yes and go out to love God, love others, serve. God's kingdom breaks through into our world. So we're about to hear a song. I ask that you please just listen to what it says about opening your heart. It's about our hearts. Amen.
Bye.